just the blessings of God. Sometimes he has to do that. So the fact is that he was with them. And this storm came to allow them to appreciate his presence. You ever get to a place where you just kind of take God for granted? You ever get to a place where you just, well, yeah, I know the words here. When, have you ever, have you ever t have the time you come here, for instance, to worship, and you, you don't seem to be with it, you don't seem to be able to worship, but God's not real to you? Happens to all of us, doesn't it? One time or another. And so sometimes God allows things just to come into our lives so we can appreciate the presence of God in our life. Uh, when things are going good and, and uh, I've got lots of money and all that, I don't need God, right? I can rely on me. Do you ever rely on you? It's when, it's when God brings us to the end where we have to say to him, Lord Jesus, I don't know what to do. I've got to rely on you. And that's when we are where God wants us. We're to live by what? Faith. In who? In the Lord Jesus Christ in God. And not in ourselves. When we are self-sufficient, everything's going well, we don't need God. You say, really? Yeah. That's the way I am. Maybe you're not that way. Maybe God didn't have to show that to you, but he did to me. And so these disciples, he's teaching them that he's still there even though the storm is there and we're to trust him in the darkness and to trust him in the storm. Number four, I want you to say that we're not to lose faith or patience because of the storm. The answer is coming. Now, it might be a while. You remember... Daniel prayed for three weeks about a particular thing and, and he said the devil has fought me and I, I was coming, I came, started three weeks ago and I've just now got to you. Sometimes God allows time to pass. Sometimes there are interferences for you and I. Don't, let's not lose our patience. Let's not lose our faith. Maybe, maybe when all the... Uh, uh, permits and all are in, we may not have everything we need. Let's not lose our patience. Let's let God work what he wants to work in our lives, in our church life and in our spiritual life. Uh, George Mueller prayed for two men for 60 years. Can you imagine that? Two men. He prayed for them for 60 years. And after he died, they got saved. When I was pastoring in Hanover, I prayed for one man for 15 years. Every time I had an evangelist, I'd take the evangelist to, to his house, and he'd always invite us in, and we'd sit down, and the evangelist would present the gospel again. And every once in a while, I'd send one of my deacons by, and they'd present the gospel. He knew the gospel better than I did for 15 years. One evening, Ron Comfort was was um, in revival service with us. So one afternoon we went by and sat down. His, this man's name was Donnie Redden. And we sat down and we began to talk again. He'd usually say, uh, you'd present him the gospel. I'd heard it a hundred times or more. We'd say, now, now Donnie, won't you receive Christ as your personal Savior? And he'd say, no, not today. This particular time, Ron Comfort and I went by and Ron Comfort presented the gospel to him again. Remember now, 15 years of praying. Almost every Wednesday night. He said, Donnie, won't you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior tonight? And he said, I think I will. 15 years. Have patience. Don't give up. Stay at it. You never know when God's going to be able to work th this particular thing. So we understand that, that we're to maintain our patience, maintain our faith. And number five, I want you to remember, God's future is bound up with yours. You understand that? 
just like Jesus was bound up, his, his presence was bound up with those disciples. He said to them, if, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. If they don't get to the other side, then he's not God. And if God doesn't take you, through, you and I through all the storms and we don't ultimately land on heaven's shore and be transformed, then he's not God. The truth is that his future, his, his uh, ideas, his thoughts are bound up with what, what will happen to you and I. See, if we don't make it, if we're not saved, if we don't make it to heaven, if we don't make it through the storms, then God can, there's something God cannot do for us. So we find it, it is bound up. Both, uh, both, both when we talk about fellowship, we, he says, if we walk in the light as he is in light, we have fellowship. What it means is we are in fellows in the same ship. If his ship goes down, our ship goes down. If ours does, his does. He, his, it's bound, we are bound up together. We are part of him. His, his, his uh, promise then has to be put to the test. Here it was. Let us pass over to the other side. And they said, Master, we're going to perish. We're not going to make it. Truth of the matter is, Jesus said they would. So they must. Because nothing is impossible with God. Whatever, see, when you read a promise from God's book, it's true. You and I can depend on it. For the little things, the big things, everything in our life, we can depend on it because God's word is true. Or he's not God. It's that simple. We have our faith in, in someone who can't take us to heaven. So we need to understand that, that, that when Jesus said, a thing is going to happen. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll see you through these troubles. We'll come, it'll come out on the other side. All things happen for good to everybody, right? No. To those that love God and that are called according to his purpose. So when God lets a storm come into your life, it happens for your good. Sometimes it's hard to see that in the midst of a storm. On the other side, the disciples looked back over there and they said, Jesus brought us through the storm. He's God. When you and I get through the storms, we ought to be able to look back and say, Jesus brought me through it. He's God. He's good. He, he'll live up to his promises. I can say to you, if I'm going to go through a storm, I want to go through it with Jesus. Amen. God, please help us tonight to trust you 